y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at SWRNC, and what we're doing is we just got done painting a Chevy truck. Now, uh, the owner of this truck, anybody that has been a longtime viewer of mine will know the guy. He goes by Clown Act 972. He is a misfit of SWRNC, but we kind of like the guy because he's a hard fucking worker and busts his fucking ass, but, uh, you know, he's just a redneck motherfucker that deserves a break in life just like everybody else. So let me show you the truck we're working on, then I'm going to tell you what we're doing. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the body shop girl it's everything you need to know about cars and more So Mr. Clown Act 972 um, had some damage over here on his truck and being the body shop guy that my friend Pete is, he asked me how much it would cost to fix it. I gave him a price, I went ahead and fixed the damage. Uh, it was over here on this panel right here and then in that corner and then it had some damage on the tailgate as well and then over here on the right rear corner was damaged along with the bedside in the center and front of the bed as well. Uh, it had a big dent right here on this cab corner and then I went ahead and replaced the fender and you can see this was a big paint job just what I did because we're not even done there we also went ahead and did all the hail damage on the roof uh, it had flaky peeling clear coat and paint I went ahead and fixed all that and painted it and did all this fucking work as a two-tone paint job two-tone paint jobs take twice as much time if not more and are painstakingly, uh, meticulously fucking hair pulling to the teeth that says, I hate two-tone paint. But, once you're all done with it, it really, really looks beautiful. So with all that said, uh, Mr. 972 fuck off guy, uh, the mechanic ace dude that he is, um, is proud of his vehicle. He's proud of the vehicle that he drives and he wants to be looking good going down the road. So he went out and purchased a cowl induction hood. You can see that right there behind me. At one time, uh, shape or form, before he started working in my fucking bay and taking up my space. And he installed it and had it painted. So I told him, while we're at it, while we're at it, since we're painting so much of this fucking truck, why don't we go ahead and put a racing stripe on your cowl induction hood. Now, if you look at this cowl induction hood, you can see that it's basically got one, two, three levels, all right? So we got the hood itself, then it's got this little hump right here, and then it's also got a raised area right here, which is pretty much squared off. So what I was gonna do for him, and he doesn't know that we're gonna do this, this is kind of a surprise for this fucking guy, so we don't wanna let the cat out of the bag. Uh, but what we were gonna do, and then I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do, is that, uh, we were going to actually come across this line here, right here in this area, and then we we're going to go straight up, and I was going to paint that black, and then because the grill that goes on this is black, I want to show that to you. You can see how it goes right there. You see what I'm talking about? So I was going to paint this black, and then I was going to come from that line, I was going to come down here and then come around this way, and then you can't see the contour, but it kind of goes around to match all the round body shape of it. And I was going to come around like this and then I was going to bring it around like that. So then it would be a two-tone scoop kind of basically to match the rest of the truck. But being the nice guy that my friend Pete is, I'm going to take it one step further. He doesn't know about this. It's going to be a big surprise and I think he's going to fucking like it. Let's get on this fucking thing. I'm going to show you how to take 
a standard bullshit fucking hood, just like you're looking at here. Jazz it up, real simple and easy, with a few little graphics, make it look custom, and it's going to make the whole truck look completely, totally different. Let's get on it. Let's go ahead and get her done. Let's do it right. sponge bucket of water and some 1500 with a flexible uh, sanding block just like you're looking at right there and I went ahead and block sanded this whole thing down to 1500 so this is ready to paint now when you block sand something like this to 1500 or block sand it you don't want to bust through the paint like this all right if you look right there you can see where I have to DA sand that because whoever painted this before didn't let the paint cure enough when they put that grill thing on there smushed the paint and it had uh, crackly ends around it. So what I did, I DA'd that down, and we will put a uh, sealer on that before we paint it. But, uh, so I sanded that down to 1500 to prep it all up. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna take my squeegee, this is a rubber squeegee, and I'm going to go ahead and squeegee all that water off, just like you're watching me do right here, and it's gonna be a nice, clean little action when we get done. And to do this kind of work, it has to be sanded down. You cannot scotch brite it. You cannot uh, just wash it off with some kind of wax and grease remover. You have to make sure that you sand the surface so the paint will have something to stick to. Um, and if you scotch brite it with a gay gray scotch brite, what that's going to do, that is going to scratch the surface more than necessary because we're not painting this whole hood, but we are going to clear coat the whole hood because we want our graphics to be under the clear coat. So then once I squeeze it, I kind of use the light as a guide here, and we're gonna try to find the places that I didn't get scuffed good, which here's an area right here. So we'll just go over that, because it's very important that you scuff everything down and everything is completely sanded properly. Right here there was an area, and I believe that was it pretty good. I don't see no shiny stuff on it and it looks like that it's all sanded. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white ball and I am going to wipe the hood down and clean it off very good, getting all the muck and scum off of it. And this is just temporary because uh, we got a lot of painting to do and uh, we're going to go back and clean this thing several times so we're going to be looking good and make sure that we keep our hands clean and uh, grease contaminated uh, free. We don't want our hands to have any grease or sloth on them. All right, now that that's dried off and um, ready for our graphics, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our fine line tape out. Now, um, there's two types that I use. This is the, the uh, this is the basically the old school tape. This is real fine line and um, it's real good to use but it doesn't really stretch and turn as much as the blue tape so um, I don't have any blue tape we're gonna have to stick with this but this is called fine line tape um, it's a flexible tape that's used for graphics so that's what we're gonna use instead of our blue tape the blue tape is actually better uh, you probably see me use it in other videos if you're a long time user um, but uh, this tape works just as good and uh, performs just as great so that's what we're using, so pay attention here, and hopefully you'll be able to see the tape as I'm putting it on, on this white uh, background here. Take my tape and I'm going to find my valley. I'm going to 
follow my shadow, and that's the line that I'm going to put on it. And I'm using the light above to find the shadow. And I can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it pretty good. And we're going to come around just like this. And then what I want to do is I want to come right here because when I put my black paint on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put a black pinstripe where this tape is. So since you didn't see that, I'll show you what I'm doing over here. Uh, I went ahead and hooked the tape on there and I'm looking at the light and I'm following the shadow of the uh, piece. And this is kind of the tricky part right here, um, getting both corners the same. So you really got to pay attention when you're doing this. So we're going to go ahead and stick that down right there. And I'm still following the light. And now what I'm doing, I'm looking from side to side, and I'm looking at where my turn starts. And then we want to eyeball it out, and that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and leave it just like that. This is kind of an eyeball situation we got going right here. Um, it's not really a situation that says uh, you can measure that out. Now you could measure it out. You can take a piece of paper and cut it over here and flip it over there. You know, but we're not going to do that. Um, I think for the illusion that we're trying to get here, I think we're going to be all right. Now I did notice that one thing. Um, it looks like this side over here. Looks like this side over here is a little closer than this side. So what we'll do is we're going to get a tape measure and kind of measure, kind of find us a measuring point there. That's that's around five and a half, and uh, that's about uh, five and a quarter. So we're about a half an inch out over here. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the tape. I don't want to mess that corner up over there, so I'm going to take the tape off right here. If I can get it off. And then what I'll do is I'll keep my corner, but I'm just going to bring it in just a little bit. And then let's see what we got there. And that's about five and a quarter right there. So that'll give us more of uh, a better illusion that it's all centered off and uh, symmetrically uh, fucking. Yeah, done. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my sealer. I'll put some sealer on this bare metal here. And then I am going to go ahead and paint this with the lower color portion of the truck, which is gold. And then when I come back, we're going to go ahead and apply our graphics on it. And you're going to see how awesome this bastard is going to look. taped the vehicle off, uh, got our pattern down on what kind of scoop situation we got going right there. And then I went ahead and painted it with base coat paint and then I put an inner coat clear on top of it. Now it's a sealer. Um, many companies make it. It's a, called inner coat clear and what that does, that's going to seal this paint. Uh, you can see it's kind of got a little bit of a shine to it. Um, it's a very quick dry and clear that's designed for 
uh, artwork such as this when you're putting several layers of paint on top of each other. So we went ahead and put two quick coats of that. I've let it dry for approximately, uh, I don't know, probably an hour. And uh, now we're ready to go ahead and start laying out our pattern that we're going to put on this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some flames on it. And I'm going to make the flames look like they're coming out of this grill right here. Remember that black grill that we had that went right in this area right here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make some flames come out of that. And hopefully they're going to look pretty nice. And uh, it's going to be a nice, quick, easy job to give this truck a little bit of pizzazz. Just enough to say, wow, look at that. And then uh, go down the road. So the first thing we're going to do before we do anything is we're going to find the center of our uh, section right here. So if we can kind of get a measurement here, this is eight and a half, so that would be four and a quarter. And uh, I'll just go ahead and make a little mark right here at four and a quarter. All right. And then we got to get a measurement up here, I guess. Motherfucker. Try to measure it out and get it the best closest we can. And that's telling me that uh, that's 25, so it'd be 12 and a half right here. Right there. Okay, so now that we found our center points, what I'm going to do is I am going to take my tape, and it was right here. Just a 
real bitch fucking doing this way out here. Like I said, it's a lot easier if you got. That's not right, motherfucker. Fuck! This is where you're telling yourself, maybe I'll just go ahead and uh, put the black stripe on there and be done with the motherfucker. I'll try it again. And we're gonna go like this. Trying to keep the same width, see? I can't get that. Okay, there we go. And I'm keeping that curve. I don't want it to look funky. I want it to look nice and clean. And this is where it gets tricky, doing this fucking bend right here. Hold it right there, looking good. I feel like I'm getting somewhere. I'm gonna make sure all this tape is down tight. What a fucking bitch. Okay. So then, we come around here like this. And then I don't like that. I don't like the way that fucking looks. I'm about to go like this. Bringing that curve around and then bringing this flame up inside here. Now that might work. So you see the situation you have is that it takes a lot of fucking practice to do this shit. Sucks. So there's another. 
situation, right? And uh, hopefully that's going to fit in there. But we'll make it work. Okay, so once you do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our crayon. This is a black crayon. And I am going to make my line. I'm tracing them out. You can see what I'm doing here. Going over it with my crayon, and it's giving me the pattern that I want. And patternized. So, if you don't want to do that, 
um, then you can actually just uh, you know make your flames and just keep going with them until they're just freehand flames. Uh, is this freehand flames? Is this a freehand flame, my friend Pete? Yes, it is freehand. You saw me do that. But actually, once I got done, I made a pattern to flip it over, and now it's going to give us a nice, beautiful pattern where it all matches. The next thing we'll do is we're going to take a white ball and some chalk. Uh, and this is where it gets a little bit messy, so you really got to kind of have patience here and uh, have a good eyeball of what the hell's going on. So we're going to take our chalk just like that, and then we're going to kind of rub it in. Okay, because what I got to do is I got to pounce a pattern out on this. I'm going to get that chalk there. And you can see how I'm doing this. I'm rubbing it on and then I'm pouncing it, see? And it's got to be pretty fucking close. You don't want to uh, move the paper around when you're doing this. You can also just kind of tap it in there and then wipe it. Okay? Tap and wipe. Tap and then wipe. And then you're going to lift it up and check your pattern. And I can see the outline of it, so that's looking good. And I'm going to lift it up now and show you that once you pass your pattern, you now have an outline of the pattern that you're going to take. The next thing you want to do is kind of blow it off. like that. And this is where the uh, blue tape really comes in handy because the blue tape is actually better than the, um, the white tape. So let me get the camera I'm going to show you this pattern so you can see what we're talking about. takes a little bit of time, but the effect that you get out of it really uh, gives you the ultimate fucking situation that says, man, that looks fucking awesome. All right, once you have your pattern all down uh, and ready for coverage, when I say coverage, I'm talking about taping it off the paint. Uh, get yourself a nice clean light bulb with some uh, wax and grease remover on it and go ahead and wipe that down. Get all of the chalk off of the paint job. All right, so now you can see the pattern that we got and what it's going to look like on the hood. Um, this is a nice little convenient flame job. Didn't really take that long, uh, less than 30 minutes really. And it's looking pretty nice. It's not 100% accurately exact, but it's exact enough to look at it and say that's pretty badass. So I'm thinking about ghost flames on this, but then I'm thinking to myself, I don't know. So we got one flame here 
that's intertwining. So what we want to do is we want to cut the center of that out. Nice and easy. I'm taking an X-Acto knife and I'm just cutting the box out in the center. And that's going to make it look like our flame goes underneath. two options. You got this item right here which is frisket paper and this is actually a big roll of paper but it's sticky on one side like tape and then you can put that down there and then you come back and you take your exacto knife and trace it out or you can actually take masking tape and go all around the lines in and out and that way there. So you want to be very careful when using this if you have it. Uh, if you have it then you are watching this video and know what I'm talking about. Think that's long enough? Right, tape it down there and give me a razor blade. Tack it down on there. Put it on there like you're going to tape it. Now give me a razor blade. Cut it while I'm holding it. About three inches over. Three inches. Not where my finger's at. Right there. Just cut down. Okay. If you can kind of stretch it out, I don't think this is going to be wide enough. Got it. And then we'll lay it down right on the flame there. Push it down. Okay, we got most of it. Here's our crayon. What we're going to do is we're going to go like this. We're going to take our crayon and we will trace out our lines using our crayon once again. And that will show us where we need to take our exacto knife. Exacto knife will cut it out, then once we're done with that, we're almost ready to paint. Where's my exacto knife? This is same here, I'll cut it out. Right, these two here, this day. Man, what are you doing? I don't know. Take the inside of the flame out, baby. Okay, you can now basically see what the fuck's going on here um, using the Frisca paper as your masking paper. Um, what I'll do now is I'll take some tape and I'll go on this outside edge. I'll cover all this with paper on the outside and then we're ready to paint our flames black. School. 
classes don't stop till you know everything.